And my experience of being so present that when a thought comes in, it's coming in because it wants to be in heaven through me. When an emotion comes in, it wants to find that wondrous heavenly place in the world. It's, it, we have been taught to let it take over. There's a story of how a thought comes in and they start niggling in a person's head and they keep playing with it and playing with it. And eventually they start giving it more attention than the other things in its life. And after a while, it's like set up its own bedroom. And it is deciding that it is now the master of the house. And the point of the story is always let these things be a visitor because they're looking for you. You're not looking for them. Allow this that comes, which might feel totally dissonant with heaven, to find a place of peace, place of, a place of inspired thought. I mean, I don't write music, but Ellie's writing songs as a result of new thought coming in. I have people who come to me all the time with health issues that they think, if I could just correct this thing, everything would be great. Not realizing how the whole system is connected to what's going on in a person's body. You know, if, if you could just fix that one thing, your whole body would have to adjust, correct? And just as uh, we've been speaking about, the greatest need is to have the largest perspective, to realize that our mission is to come from the place where it's all working, the entire world, this entire world, this house of God, this house of God. It's all resonant and vibrating at the, the same resonance of love. So that when we're paying attention to it, we're not so focused on getting what makes us comfortable as much as this thing came to us so that it can be included in the house of God. That doesn't mean we don't pay attention to the things that come to our plate. I'm not saying that, you know, you got weeds in the garden, you got to pluck them. If you believe in plucking weeds. <laughs> They're just yeah. flowers in the wrong place. <laughs> yeah, but they're killing the other stuff I'm trying to grow. Or when something spills on the floor, more practical thing, it needs to be wiped out. There are immediate things that need our attention, but the greatest human need is for the resonance of who we are to be in the res resonance of the source of who we are, which is the source of who all of us are, which means it's all humanity's need. We use the word at times sacred. I love that word. Word. I don't use it in a religious way. I use it in a way of preciousness, holiness, and power. What's sacred to me is say, what is sacred for the world needs is what I long to have sacred for me. Not just the private things that make me happy, but that life, love is able to thrive because I'm keeping the atmosphere that I bring sacred, so that when things do come, I don't let them violate what I see as sacred. Then I start to see the sacred in all things, all people, all circumstances. Because if the kingdom is at hand, so is the sacredness that it brings and the sacredness required to keep it sustained. And human beings have this wonderful capacity and responsibility to generate it, protect it, and invite others to know it together. <laughs>